Ooh wee check out this big mama, literally. See, this giant ancient Western Red Cedar tree here is what's commonly referred to these days as a mother tree, even though individual trees of this species don't have clear distinctions for gender. You know, they're monoecious, meaning they have both male and female reproductive parts. So the term mother tree here refers more to the way that it fosters and supports those in this diverse forest stand that grow underneath it, acting in a very nurturing or mothering way to help the next generation of forest thrive. And it does this through what's known as a mycorrhizal fungi that exists in the soil and connects all these different individuals of different species at their root tips. Now, there are many different species of fungi who connect to many different species of trees and plants through different manners and in this case here this giant western red cedar that is well over a thousand years old is connected by an arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi that link it to its neighboring big leaf maple trees all this sword fern in the understory and to what are likely its offspring around here these one, two, three big western red cedars that are all growing just beyond the drip line or the edge of its crown that are about four to five hundred years old now in this system, the bigger, more mature trees tend to be more well-established in the canopy of the forest and thus are able to photosynthesize more to create more sugars, which flow down its stem to the fungi in the soil who use some of that to grow and then distribute the rest of those resources to smaller trees and plants in the understory who are shaded out and don't receive as much light so that they too can grow big and strong to eventually take the place of this matriarch tree in the forest canopy when it inevitably dies as this forest continues to mature. Now studies have shown how this energy flow happens through different species at different times of year, but we've also witnessed mother trees sending more resources specifically to their offspring above all others to help ensure their survival, which is pretty incredible. Now, whether or not this tree here is making a conscious choice of directing its nutrients to its offspring is still up for debate. You know, perhaps it's the fungi recognizing genetic similarities between a good providing source of nutrients and wanting to support others who can ensure its survival. Who knows? It's still widely being studied, but you know, is it ever really possible for us humans to fully understand what a different species may be thinking or feeling or why they do what they do? We are after all limited by our own perception and understanding of this world as humans, but I still think it's a pretty inspiring example of life working together despite their differences to create a healthy functioning ecosystem in which they all can thrive that ensures a bright future for those who follow. And that is something us humans could probably learn a lot from.